Looking for something a little different? We've got it this week on Motoring 2001. TSN's Motoring 2001 is brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oils, formulated for the vehicles you drive and the way you drive them. And Midas, keep a good thing going. Go Midas! You know, since 1988, our goal on motoring has been to showcase cars and the people who drive them and try and bring you as many different vehicles as possible. And each week on Test Drive, Graham tries to bring us a variety of vehicles throughout the price range. But you may have noticed a bit of a trend on the program lately. Many of our test drives and many of our stories have been about trucks, pickups, and sport utilities. But no matter how hard we try, trucks are the reality of today's automotive world. Everybody is building sport utes. Even Porsche is about to jump on the bandwagon. But believe it or not, there's still a few of us left who love cars. So with that in mind, I'm happy to report that this week's program is a truck free zone. And we're going to start with the introduction of a brand new car. It's built by Acura. It's called an RSX. And you know Bill Gardner, he always tells us if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, maybe Acura should listen to him because the RSX is going to replace the Integra, the company's most successful vehicle. This week on Test Drive, we look at the 1994 Acura Integra. Now, this is the third generation of this car. And as you're about to find out, it's definitely the best one to date. Well, obviously, Graham liked the 94 edition of the Integra, and he wasn't alone, as the model was a major success for Acura. So why change? The Integra's been around since 1987, three generations. Yeah, it's been successful. We've sold over 96,000 of the Integra's coming up to that. But our customers are changing, and we're changing. We're trying to establish the Acura brand in a different way than we have in the past. Integra was so successful that it became almost a brand unto itself. And I think when people bought Integras, they were buying that first and maybe because it was an Acura second. We want to turn that around. We want people to buy Acuras. So that when you ask somebody what do they drive, we want them to say, well, I drive an Acura RSX or I drive an Acura, I drive a TL. We want that to be the first thing that comes out, not well, I drive an Integra, because we really want the association with the, with the entire brand. It's a risky strategy, I think, because the Integra name has been so, so well known throughout its various uh, incarnations. But clearly their strategy is to come up with a completely new product with higher performance than the Integra. So I guess their thought was that uh, it made sense to dispense with the Integra name and go with something new. We don't think it's a gamble. Uh, with this uh, RSX, uh, we think uh, uh, Acura can uh, go up to the next stage to enhance the overall Acura brand. The RSX, we're going to have three trim levels. The RSX, our standard trim, is unique to Canada. One of the reasons we've introduced that is because we want to make sure the car isn't out of reach from a price and affordability standpoint. We don't want to, while we're establishing something new, we understand that we have a real core of, of Acura and Integra enthusiasts that we want them to be able to afford the vehicle. The premium we think will be where the bulk of our sales are. It offers the performance and all the luxury features that uh, Acura has come to stand for. The Type S is for the real driving enthusiast, the person that really is looking for a challenge every time they get behind the wheel. And uh, that car will deliver that performance for them. Yeah, it's a completely new powertrain for the RSX and two versions available. Uh, within the three models in Canada. A uh, two liter high output engine, 200 horsepower engine for the Type S and 160 horsepower version for the premium and uh, RSX space. I think dumping the Integra is a move that's uh, very much for the better. I hated the Type R. When you revved that engine up, it sounded like a really buzzed off bee in a tin can. The new Type S, without giving too much 
away about the upcoming test drive, it's a vastly different car and one that's going to be, I think, a much hotter seller. The Integra was the cheapest but probably the most interesting car built by Acura if you're a driver. Because, you know, the other Acuras were uh, very often a boring car to drive, but uh, the Integra was, is definitely one of my all-time favorites. So the replacement of that car is something very, very important for me and for, I think, all the young uh, drivers who want a uh, good bang for the box. Is this a guy's car? Oh, I think so. It's uh, the performance aspect of it. It handles excellent. I think uh, it's going to attract definitely a large percentage of males. Um, I, I think uh, with the trim lineup that we have, we're also going to uh, attract a, a good female following. I think the styling is very strong in it. Um, and, you know, females that want to feel good in their car, definitely. I think we'll get a good mix of both. It always is a gamble when you move away from something that's been as successful as uh, Integra has been. Uh, but, uh, you know, we think that uh, customers are changing, marketplace is changing, and, uh, and we have to change too. It's not a replacement for anything. It's a car that stands on its own, and we believe that over time uh, it will become the scene of our life. Can you tell what kind of car this is? Does this help? Does it matter? A rose by any other name, coming up later on Kenzie's Corner. Back in the early 80s, Mercedes-Benz introduced the 190 sedan, a car that proved to be less than sweet in nature. In the early 90s came the first C-Class. This week on Test Drive, we take a look at the latest version. This is the all-new C240. When compared to the previous car, there are more than 20 technical innovations borrowed from Mercedes-Benz flagship models. The result is a very distant relative to that original 190. From a styling perspective, the resemblance to the S-Class is more than a passing one. The headlights, grille and tail lights are all familiar. That, however, is not to say the C-Class is a smaller clone. This new C-Class also gets a stiffer structure, one that's 26% stronger than the vehicle it replaces. Mercedes also stretched the wheelbase by about 25 millimeters and added to the width of the track. The result is better handling and certainly a more civilized ride. Elsewhere, the 0.26 coefficient of drag, well that allows the wind to slip around it, eliminating most of the usual noise. Behind that stately facade is arguably the best bit of news. No more four-cylinder engines. The base 240 now comes with a 2.6-litre V6 engine. The use of single overhead cams and three valves per cylinder yields a useful 168 horsepower and 177 pounds-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. Running from rest to 100 km an hour takes a respectable 9 seconds. The best part though is that the engine dishes out its power in the mid-range, which is where most really need it. Our tester featured the same 5-speed manumatic that switches gears so well in the S-Class. Pull the lever into drive and you're driven. Nudge the lever left and you drop a cog, touch to the right and you go up a gear. In other words, complete control without the aggravation of a heavy clutch. You know, the lone weakness with this new engine is the drive-by-wire throttle. When you're at speed, it obeys driver instruction very well. However, when the vehicle slows down, its operation slows down as well. Particularly if you come up to a rolling stop, make a right-hand turn and go back on the gas, it lags behind driver needs. And it really is out of step with an otherwise excellently engineered automobile. The C-Class sets high standards in the ride and handling department. The front McPherson strut base design uses three links to locate the lower end. In back, there's a fully independent multi-link suspension with a roll bar. Through the pylons, the C240 retained a flat attitude with understeer and oversteer being effectively tamed. Another move for the better is the adoption of rack and pinion steering. The older recirculating ball system had a tendency to feel a little wooden on centre. The new car delivers a lighter, crisper feel that feeds all the relevant information back without that fake feel. 
Pressed into a corner, the C-Class hunkers down and tracks a true line. You know, inside the new C-Class, this thing is every inch a Mercedes-Benz. You get a good set of analog dials, effective climate controls, a good sounding radio, and just about power everything. You also get a tilt and telescopic steering wheel. Combine that feature with the fully articulated driver's seat and you can set the correct driving position in a matter of seconds. On the subject of the seats, well, they're typical Mercedes-Benz in as much as they're as hard as a park bench. That's not to say they're uncomfortable. Now, when you get in the back, it's very much more of the same. There's plenty of head and leg room, but there is a drawback back here. First of all, the seats don't split or fold, and there's not even a ski pass through behind this armrest. The result, when you look in the trunk, what you see is what you get. Braking power is delivered by a four-wheel disc setup that is all but fade-free. Standard anti-lock and brake assist round out a very effective package that brings stopping distances that average 110 feet from 80k. Likewise, safety is top-notch. Along with all the usual his and hers front airbags and four side airbags, the C-Class benefits from drop-down side curtains. Now these things are used to prevent your head from crashing through the side window during a collision. At long last, Mercedes-Benz have built themselves a legitimate contender in the near luxury segment. This new C-Class brings decent power, very nice handling and all the interior amenities you can possibly want. Add a face that nobody's going to mistake for anything other than a Benz and at last, unlike its previous two attempts, you now have the real deal. Our Midas tip of the week concerns hose clamps. Under the hood of a modern car, you'll find literally dozens of hose clamps sealing the cooling system, the fuel system, vacuum hoses, and quite often power steering hoses as well. A few things you should remember when dealing with these hose clamps. The majority of modern cars use a spring-type hose clamp, and there's a lot of tension on that, on that hose clamp. So when you're dealing with it, you put it under compression with a pair of pliers, you've got to make sure you've got safety glasses on, because when the clamp clears the hose and you remove that item, whatever it is, it's quite possible that that spring clamp can fly off. If it hits you in the eye, you're going to get injured. So make sure you wear safety glasses. Another thing you should keep in mind, this is a maintenance-free type of clamp, the spring type clamp. So reuse it wherever possible because when I say maintenance-free, it's because the spring tension built into the clamp is constantly trying to retighten that hose. You never need to retighten it. Now there are applications or areas of the car where it's not feasible to reuse those from a clearance problem. They're used at the factory because quite often the hose is installed before some other item is in the way. In the field when you're making a repair, you don't always have that luxury. Now if you have to replace those clamps with the old traditional gear type clamp, this one right here, remember that this clamp is not spring loaded, it's not maintenance free. So if you replace a spring clamp with a gear clamp, remember that it's going to require periodic tightening, especially on a new hose, the clamp will bed into the hose and it'll become loose. You'll have to give it the odd little tweak with a screwdriver to re-tighten it. It's not maintenance free. Keep that in mind if you've replaced any hoses on a new car. That's your Midas tip of the week. It's a 1939 Ford Beckel body fire truck. I bought it in 1989, paid a little under 5000 for it, and uh, it wasn't very pretty when I got it. Completely rebuilt the truck, and uh, we value it at around 30000 now. It's a Ford, and I'm a Ford lover, so that was the first thing, and I'm also a firefighter since 1956. So there was the dual things. It originally it didn't have the front mount pump, which you can see is on the front of the truck. This was installed approximately in 1953, uh, and it originally carried 400 gallons of water, and we now only have a 100-gallon water tank. You know, at, at 45, 50 miles an hour, there's a, a lot of people want to pass you, but uh, quite unique. You get a lot of horns, a lot of, a lot of thumbs up. Uh, you know, there's a really 
rubberneck when, when you go by them. As we heard earlier, the Integra was a huge success for Acura. But you know, this car also rubbed the company the wrong way, simply because the name Integra had become bigger than the brand itself. You weren't driving an Acura, you were driving an Integra. Well, the company is hoping that the new RSX will change that kind of thinking. But you know, I think it goes a step further. I think a lot of people were simply intimidated by the name Acura. Is it Acura? Or is it Acura? Both are still used, but they tell me Acura is accurate. But you know, this leads me to one of my pet peeves about how they name cars today. You've got the RSX, you've got the WRX, you've got the Type S, the S-Type, the IS this, the GS this, and the list goes on. What happened to the good old days when you had names like the New Yorker, Camaro, Trans Am, the Roadrunner, and so on? Well, I don't have the answer, but I know a guy that just might have it, and that's our man in the Quaker State Garage, Bill Gardner. Well, Brad, I guess I'm partial to GM cars because all the names that I like referred to GM cars like Monte Carlo and Cutlass Supreme and Corvette. Anyhow, uh, when I think about letters and number designations for vehicles, I always think in terms of motorcycles because all the Honda motorcycles that I owned were denoted with things like CB750, XR500, etc. And the numbers always denoted the uh, displacement in CCs. I just can't think in, in terms of a car with those types of uh, designations. Anyhow, we've got some mail this week from one of our viewers. Rolf Voss is his name. He's got a 94 Cavalier RS. There you go with the, uh, the uh, letter designation. He says he's got uh, 22,000 K on it. It's in great shape. Best of all, it has no rust. Just recently, I've been driving in the rain and found puddles in the trunk. I know it's not coming from the rubber seals around the trunk. I think that it's coming from seams in the body where it's welded. Uh, I don't know what product or material to use. How do I go about fixing this? Well, first of all, I think, Ralph, in all likelihood, you're going to find that your leakage may, in fact, be coming from the rear glass. Now, the rear glass in modern cars is held in with urethane, the same material that the windshield is bonded into the car. There's no rubber seals there. It's an adhesive. And after the glass is placed into, that, into the body of the car, the glass actually adds rigidity to the car and the uh, urethane seals all the water out. Now it's quite possible that there's a little bit of what they refer to as sealer skip when they lay down the bead of urethane, they get a little bit of a void in it somewhere and eventually water leaks past it. That's one thing I'd be looking for and an auto glass shop would be the place to have that repaired if in fact that's your problem. Now in this gutter area just outside the perimeter of the uh, trunk seals is another area where leakage can occur. There's a number of seams in here. On this car there's one right there along here and another one right down here that's more visible. If there's any uh, leakage through those those seams, of course water's going to enter the trunk. The 3M Corporation make excellent sealants for that. A body shop or an auto glass shop is familiar with those and can apply them uh, as need be. Now another avenue you could explore if you're in a major, major urban area, I know in Toronto for example there's an outfit that caters to dealerships and body shops. They work mobile out of a van and all they do is fix water leaks. So you could look into that as well if you're in a major urban area. Now our viewer mentioned that he has no rust on the car, it's a 94 Cavalier. It only has no rust because of the low mileage, 22,000 K, and I'll guarantee you that if he were able to see inside some of his panels, like the doors for example, there's probably some rust that's probably got a pretty good foothold in there, it's probably started. Would be very unlikely to find it otherwise. But if it doesn't show on the outside, now would be the time to get that car rust proofed or rust checked so that that rust doesn't penetrate any further. If you've got a car that's still in good shape and you want to milk some more miles out of it, it's never too late to uh, have something like that done. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2001. As Brad mentioned earlier in the show, one of the interesting things about the Acura RSX is that it is no longer an Integra. It's the name of car model names within the Acura brand. So far, they're one for two. I mean, the TL replaced the distinctly unvigorous Vigor. It's been a huge hit. The RL replaced the Legend and hasn't been heard of since. How well this one will do? Only time will tell. Now, it's part of Acura's plan 
to emphasize the Acura name over the car model name. Their theory is the people who own BMWs or Mercedes Benzes don't say, I drive a 3 Series or I drive a C-Class, it's I drive a Mercedes or I drive a BMW. Acura is trying to achieve the same status with their name. Now they got several challenges in front of them here. First of all, nobody with the possible exception of Lexus has ever been able, in the car business or any other business, to make a prestigious brand name out of a word fabricated by some market research computer in San Francisco. I mean, Acura doesn't mean anything. Most people don't even know how to pronounce it. Do you remember that ad a bunch of years ago when the guy took his NSX to Italy and showed his Papa? Acura Papa. Of course, the irony is in Italy, the car is known as a Honda. And that's another point. The true prestigious names are the same the world over. If you go to Montreal or Manila, a Mercedes-Benz is a Mercedes-Benz. Even the dealerships look the same. But the Acura name is only used here. As a matter of fact, the RSX in Japan, it's known as the Honda Integra. Another aspect of this is the hundreds of millions of dollars Honda spending on motorsport. In North America, they try to apply that image to the Acura name, and yet the name on the cars is Honda. I don't get it. It seems to me like some marketing genius is getting paid huge amounts of money to confuse the customer. Don't you think they could spend that money better, like maybe build me a race car? Never mind. What do I know? I'm just an engineer. I'm not a marketing genius. I'm Jim Kenzie. Although Graham will be doing a full-out test drive on a future program on the new RSX, a few final comments before we go. After a brief period behind the wheel, I think it's safe to say that Acura will not regret its decision to replace the Integra. But if you're going to buy one of these vehicles, I would go with the Type S model. It is loaded with performance and it's a whole lot of fun to drive. Everything the Integra was known for and more. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. This is about eight inches longer than a Mazda Miata, but it carries four passengers. Uh, the name 04 highlights the unique combination of open air and four passenger seating. Again, which we think is really significant uh, on a vehicle this size. I believe the concept is so strong that we are going to see it someday. TSN's Motoring 2001 has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oils, formulated for the vehicles you drive and the way you drive them. And Midas, keep a good thing going. Go Midas!